Hey, what's up team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. This video is on the SF group, the club. Um, I call them herbalists. You can think of them as the, the socials. That's another name for them in socionics. And let's get right into it. So in this video, I'm going to explain first the, the technical understanding, kind of what is sensing and what is feeling. Uh, if you've been watching the other videos, you should already know this, but maybe it'll help to have a little refresh. And after that, the top three kind of big ideas, the big keys to understanding an SF type, the herbalist. And also after that, um, how to spot an herbalist, how to know if you're talking to one of these, these mysterious people. And after that, the team dynamics. So let's get into it. Uh, part number one, the technical understanding of it. Basically you have sensing, which is a way of understanding the world, a way of taking in information based on your senses, based on the real tangible experience. After that you have feeling. Feeling is a way of making decisions. It's a judging function basically centered around values and kind of ethics or morals uh, that kind of gets skewed up a little bit, but that's what it is. It's a way of making decisions based on people. So you have experience plus people. And um, as always, the dynamics are going to shift a bit depending on which of the four kind of variety uh, the SF is that you're talking to or that you are. Um, but the general understanding is there. Um, sensing, experience-based. SE, extroverted sensing, is going to be based on the current verifiable sensory world. And introverted sensing is going to be based on how the current situation kind of compares to the past. It's looking for more reliable information and, and kind of the, the archetypes and the, the perfect instance of this one thing. And it's going back and checking through uh, all the previous experiences to see how the current stuff kind of matches up to that. Um, for feeling, this people side of it, uh, extroverted feeling is going to be making decisions based on how other people feel and, and kind of the mood of the environment, um, the people involved, kind of using them as a way to, to make an appropriate decision. It's about the collective you know, group and making a decision that meshes with that. Or trying to sometimes influence other people to fit with um, the group that you're attached to or your own personal feelings. Introverted feeling is going to be a, I guess, ethical or moral value-based decision based on your own personal understanding, how you feel about this thing and how you've kind of determined it to be. Is it good? Is it bad? How does it sit with you being yourself and, you know, is it authentic to you to make this choice? So you have all those, you kind of mix them up and you have the technical understanding. I really don't want to get into it too much more. Uh, you can watch any of the other videos that I've posted to get more information on that. But this video is more about the combination of S and F. So going to the next part, let's look at the top three big ideas for the herbalist. Basically, number one, I'm gonna to try to keep this kind of RPG-like because it's, it's a little more fun, right? So you have the herbs aspect. Part two, you have the state-altering aspect. And then part three, you have the, the kind of ways of interacting with the world. So first, herbs. This is the environment. They want the concrete, real world, down-to-earth information. So they take 
all those sensory aspects, what they can, whether it's from their past or from the current situation, they take that real down to earth information and they go to the state altering aspect. They want to influence people. So it's basically a way of impacting other people through values and emotions, through interacting with them in real concrete ways. Uh, it could be like physical contact, high five. This was a high five. This wasn't a slap or anything like that. Uh, you know, handshakes, hugs and all that stuff. Or it could be just taking care of somebody, making sure that they are comfortable in the situation. Uh, basically, it's exploring the environment for ways to alter and impact other people's states. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty simple and contained in that idea. Um, what they do is is not simple. It's it takes a lot of awareness of other people and what's actually going on in the real world. Um, but generally, they're they're trying to impact other people's moods and take care of those people in some way, assuming that they're good people, right? Uh, and after that, how they how they interact with the world is basically they have they sense an object. Okay? They see something. They use sensing. They see something. They evaluate it with their feeling. And then they choose, do I, how do I want to act on this? Do I want to you know, embrace it or do I want to reject it? So whatever the situation is, first it's sensory. Because if you can't recognize something, right, you need to perceive something before you can judge it. So you, they have to recognize it, it's boom, okay, this is the real situation. Then how do I feel about this? Or how does the group feel about this? It's a value-based assessment. And after that, okay, let's take some real physical action and, and deal with it. Whether it's leaving the situation or kind of trying to convince other people that this is the right choice, whatever it is, it's, it's a way of acting based on that evaluation, which comes from the sensing of the object or the thing, the tangible understanding of what that is. Next up, how to spot an herbalist. Um, <clears throat> let's see, they're not going to be picking herbs out of the ground or anything. Well, they could be. I don't know. <laughs> I have a friend, he's an ESFP. I think he would very, he'd be very happy just picking herbs out of the ground and wandering through the forest and stuff like that but I, I can't speak for all of them, I guess. Um, first of all, sensing, you're going to be able to see that through how they interact with the environment and how they express their thoughts. Their thoughts are not going to generally be like really abstract and obscure and stuff like that, like an intuitive. Um, and because it's sensing, they're more likely going to be focused on the sensory impact of the vocabulary that they use um, and, and words that describe things through those senses. You know, it's burning hot, it's toasty, things like that. Um, whereas an intuitive might kind of relate it to something else, metaphorically, or contextually, abstract, whatever way it is. Um, introverted sensing is they're generally trying to uphold the everyday life. They're trying to make sure things stay congruent in that sense. They're in, they want everything to continue the same because that's how it worked before. They trust that it's going to be stable, it's going to be secure, it's going to continue in the correct direction because it's already happened, it's worked before. It's kind of like a long-term approach in that sense. Uh, SE types are gonna be like, let me jump in there and 
kind of improvise, let me bounce around a little bit, let me try to impact the situation, the environment, and I'll adapt to what happens. Uh, it's, they're very good at crisis management and stuff like that because that's how their brain is wired and they're always looking for how things impact their senses in the situation and what they see, what they hear, smell, taste, whatever. Introverted sensing is more refined in that sense. <laughs> um, like it's, it's taken a step back. They see something and then they have to compare it to what happened before so that they can make sense of it, right? It's going to be a little bit slower in, in the sensing department. Um, feeling, the, the two feeling types you'll have FE, extroverted feeling, is outward expression of emotions. It's emoting, um, it's speaking through emotions and values. Whereas introverted feeling is kind of listening through feelings and values and stuff like that. So extroverted feelers are going to be like, this is how I feel about this situation. And they're, they're trying to talk it out with people. They're trying to influence the mood of other people or just express themselves. Whereas introverted feelers are going to, they're going to seem colder in a lot of ways, kind of with a thinking type feeling to them. But, um, if you, if you kind of poke them in the wrong spot, and you tread over one of their their values that they hold really deeply, they'll probably just explode and, and you'll have an issue to deal with. <laughs> you know, like these deep-seated values and emotions that are held on to for dear life. <laughs> Trust me. I know. Um, and yeah, so their introverted feelers are more contained. So you're going to have this combination of those, whether it's S-I-F-E, like an S-F-J, um, which depending on if they're introverted or extroverted, it's going to be a little bit different, but S-F-J types are going to be trying to make sure people are comfortable in this regular situation. They're trying to make sure everybody's needs are met consistently and and they follow, you know, the duty, the tradition, things like that, to make sure people have these good, long-lasting experiences. Make sure everybody comes over for, for Christmas and, you know, has the best Christmas that they can, for example. Uh, but an SEFI, so an SFP, are going those types are going to just be more likely to embrace whatever the current situation is and relate it to however they feel about it with less consideration for how the group feels, but they're still going to try if assuming they're good people, they're still going to try to adapt themselves and the environment to help people to, to interact with them in some way that relates to them because as an introverted feeler they know the the internal understanding of a lot of people right they felt it so they're likely to kind of project that onto somebody else and imagine how they would feel in this situation instead of an sfj type this is getting complicated but an sfj type is going to kind of see the mood of everybody else and try to stabilize the situation, try to maintain the environment in order to make sure everybody, everybody's values are kind of met. So that's enough of that. <laughs> okay, so team dynamics. If you are an herbalist on a team, um, it's, it's your job to find those herbs, find the, the real situations and relate those to other people, buff other people, you know, give them more resistance or strength or whatever it is so that they can continue on to the next step. Uh, moral support's nice and stuff too, but like physically figure out what they need. Look at their body language, look at, 
you know, how they're fidgeting or whatever and be like, you know, you want to change seats? Are you okay? Like, how can I, how can I help you out? You know, sensory acuity. I think that's what that's called. Look, just look at their physical, you know, structure. <laughs> if they're looking around back and forth a bunch, then maybe they're a little tense about something. Maybe they're worried about something, right? If they're taking these big deep breaths, deal with that. So physically help other people and they will help you back hopefully and things will be good. Um, if you're working with an herbalist, um, first of all, listen to them, I would say. You know, like they, they have feeling as one of their, as their decision-making process, right? So it's important to listen to the values that they're talking about, listen to how they feel about something. Um, and be, be rational, be concrete with them. Uh, you know, speak through sensing, basically. So don't be too abstract. Of course, you know, everybody can follow that stuff, but generally, if you're trying to get a point across, use real, tangible information and events, experiences to relate that. That's gonna have way more impact than tying it to some like Dumbo flying elephant or something like that. Like it's just, it's gonna fall flat, <laughs> the, the metaphor, right? So give them the real good information. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, some, some herbalists, I guess, first Tony Robbins and Michael Jackson, both SFPs, um, Tony Robbins, ESFP, Michael Jackson, ISFP. Uh, you can see how they like, they play people like instruments. You know, they're, the music or how they interact with people lifts them up and changes their state. That's, that's what an herbalist is in my mind. It's they're finding the correct real world stuff to help other people to alter their mood and, and their state. And so you have Andrew Carnegie and Mother Teresa as the SFJ types trying to um, maintain the, the current situation, follow duty, tradition and stuff like that and impact people in, in a very powerful way through emotions and through group held values. So that is the end of this video on herbalists. I hope it was informative and, and kind of helped you out in some way, maybe gave you a little insight into somebody that you have daily contact with and you never really thought about their type. The next video is going to be on the NF types, the enchanters, and look forward to that next week on Tuesday. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck, have fun. Peace.